Across Pixar's 24 existing films, they have 20 protagonists. Within this group are different power levels and feats. Today, we determine who is the most powerful Pixar protagonist. Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is Pixar Protagonist, Weak to Powerful. All right, the rules, folks. This time around, we decided to rank the protagonists based on how powerful they are in relation to one another, as opposed to how strong they are contextually in their universe. We'll start with protagonists that are weaker than a human. All these protagonists have major flaws, and any of us could beat them in combat. The weakest Pixar protagonist would have to be Dory of Finding Dory. Dory is very limited. Blue tank fish range from 4.7 to 15 inches. As a result, Dory's hits don't make an impact. Imagine being slapped by a fish the size of a CD. Dory has no combat skills. Her approach to conflict is negotiation. While this works in her journeys in Finding Nemo and Finding Dory, it doesn't aid her in combat. Dory's personality cements her as the weakest Pixar protagonist. Dory is gullible. In Finding Nemo, she's eager to join Bruce's Fish Are Friends, Not Food campaign, although Bruce and his friends are sharks. Fish are friends. Not food. Additionally, Dory suffers from short-term memory loss, limiting her ability to recall information. Dory would struggle during a fight, forgetting what she's meant to be doing. Topping it all off is Dory's dependence on water, neutering her fighting ability within any land context. Beyond any reasonable doubt, Dory is the weakest Pixar protagonist. Next is Flick from A Bug's Life. Being an ant, Flick is immediately out of the running for most powerful because, I mean, the guy's small. Human characters like Carl Fredrickson and Miguel could easily dispose of Flick. Not only is Flick not a viable threat when compared to a human, but Flick isn't even a threat against other characters in A Bug's Life. He can't defeat Hopper, and he relies on trickery. He and the other ants build a bird to scare Hopper and his lackeys. First, this requires preparation time, a feature not allowed for this list. Second, the ability to scare away enemies relies on them having a predator. Building a bird against a grasshopper is appropriate, but what could Flick build to scare away humans? His small size and reliance on preparation make Flick a poor threat. His only saving grace is his intellect. He invents a telescope and automatic harvester, and that ranks him above Dory. Now is Remy from Ratatouille. Remy is held back by being a rat. Remy would lose to any human. Across Ratatouille, Remy doesn't do anything impressive combat-wise. He shows no combat skills and isn't even the strongest among the rats. His brother Emil would pack more of a punch. He doesn't have any direct confrontation with the villain. Despite being a rat with no combat skills, Remy has less of a fundamental flaw than Dory or Flick. He can survive on land and is larger than an ant, which justifies his place as the third weakest Pixar protagonist. Next is Woody from Toy Story. Woody surprisingly has some combat skills. In Toy Story 2, Woody goes hand-to-hand -hand against Stinky Pete. He holds his own until Stinky Pete overwhelms him. While not very impressive, this demonstrates that Woody has some level of fighting experience. He throws a punch and wrestles. Remy never does that. Woody also has strengths as a strategist. Being a toy, Woody is used to observing but not interfering. Woody orchestrates the prison break in Toy Story 3. He also uses deceit in the first Toy Story, where he scares Sid and knocks Buzz out the window using a lamp. Despite this, Woody has some issues common to the lower entries. His small size prevents him from taking on a human opponent. He also has low durability after his arm was ripped off. Not to mention that Woody lost the Stinky Pete fight. And Stinky Pete isn't the only character who would rank higher than Woody. Buzz Lightyear? That guy does some parkour. Escaping Al's toy barn in Toy Story 2 and rounding up the gang in Toy Story 3 establishes Buzz as a far more combat-ready toy than Woody. For the above reasons, Woody is the lowest entry on this list with any combat skill. Marlin from Finding Nemo is next. For comparison, Marlin actually wins a fight in Finding Nemo. He beats an anglerfish, a far more viable opponent than a grasshopper or a toy prospector. Marlin is also a strategist. He bounces on the jellyfish heads to avoid being stung and gets in Nigel's mouth when asked. Whoever can hop the fastest out of these jellyfish win. Marlin has the intellectual ability to make him a little powerful. Despite his successes with the anglerfish, Marlin is reliant on water. This restricts his movement and ability to fight a human. His small size doesn't help either. Despite his valiant efforts, Marlin deserves a low spot on this list. 
The next spot goes to Mike Wazowski. Mike has no combat skills, but ranks higher than the others so far because of his size. Well, Mike is humanoid. For this reason alone, I'm pretty sure he would be fine destroying toys, insects, or fish. Having said that, Mike has no distinctive strengths in combat. He doesn't fight to any great extent either. With no combat capabilities, Mike must turn to other skills, but is out of luck. A monster's main talent would be intimidating, which Mike is not fit for. The main plotline of Monsters University is Mike not being scary, despite his commitment to scaring class. Mike is not a threatening presence, and it's difficult for him to fight anyone. Mike is unsuccessful when he attempts to scare a child in the film's climax. Not having a threatening aura prevents Mike from winning fights by scaring his opponent into concession. To top it off, Mike has a giant gaping eye in the center of his face. Well, that's a vulnerability. Other characters with no fighting training could finish Mike with one bop in the eye. This leaves Mike as the last entry in this category. Now for the ordinary humans. These characters are everyday people with no enhancements, technological or magical. First in this category is Carl Fredrickson. He's elderly with all the ailments that accompany it. His back cracks in the morning, his movement is slow, and he has no fight training, but he is feisty. This includes his stubbornness. He's also not afraid to stand up to Charles Muntz. This ambition forms an argument for Carl having some fighting potential. He also carries a cane, a weapon that could certainly give Mike Wazowski a black eye. Beyond that, Carl is still an old man, establishing him as the weakest human Pixar lead. Next is Joy from Inside Out. Joy is metaphysical and unable to fight, so for the purpose of this list, Joy is combined with Riley. Riley is depicted as a decent hockey player. Her family has trained her since a young age, and she's passionate about the sport. One of her islands of personality is hockey land. As a result, Riley is agile. This is a significant advantage over Carl Fredrickson, who uses a chairlift to get to and from his bedroom. Riley would be able to best Carl in combat despite not having any combat ability. Joy is resourceful, as demonstrated by waking up Riley to keep the train of thought moving. Joy's resourcefulness could likely give Riley further advantages. Riley does, however, have some limitations. Being a child reduces her combat ability. As a young girl, she wouldn't be able to contest adults physically. She also hasn't fully matured, making her strategic ability less than adults. Overall, Riley could defeat Carl, but is still mediocre. Miguel from Coco is next. Like Riley, Miguel is agile. He's able to escape from Aunt Amelda in the staircase scene. This would allow for some level of combat skill. Miguel is also a 12-year-old boy, slightly older than Riley, who is 11. As a result, Miguel is likely physically stronger by being a year older and closer to hitting puberty. Miguel is also male, which more likely leads to an increase in strength. Additionally, Miguel is a talented guitar player, proving he has an aptitude with his fingers that may translate well to fighting. This combines to form a flimsy argument for Miguel as a fighter, but he's still limited by being an ordinary human. Not only this, but he's bound by the same issues as Riley. As a developing boy, his strength and strategy are far from established, leading to issues in a major fight. Next is Joe Gartner. Soul is a more existential Pixar movie, abandoning action and world-ending conflict for a personal reflective experience. Despite this, Joe demonstrates the basis for combat ability. When Joe's body is controlled by 22, Joe runs to escape. The speed Joe travels at appears substantial, similar to Miguel's scene in Coco. This presents an argument for Joe being able to fight Miguel favorably through his speed. Joe's also an adult, providing an immediate advantage over Riley and Miguel due to increased strength. However, Joe is limited. The scene in question is shown from Joe's perspective while he's a cat. As a result, 22 in Joe's body may not be traveling fast. Rather, it's Joe's perception that makes him appear fast. Also, Joe is unobservant. He's constantly distracted by his goal to succeed as a musician. While this alleviates throughout Joe's journey of self-discovery, such distraction would allow opponents to outwit Joe in combat or land a quick blow. Overall, Joe is more combat-ready than Miguel, but not enough to stand up to some of the higher-ranking members of this list. Next is Luca. All right, Luca is not technically human. He's a sea monster, so him being in this category is kind of dubious. However, he is definitely weaker than the strongest human character, so his placement here fits. He also takes a human form, and any fights would be on land, making his classification as a human appropriate. Luca has a few remarkable abilities. Luca cycles fast in the Portoroso Cup, even faster than Ercold, who's five years older. By being able to cycle so fast, Luca is certainly agile. 
Furthermore, sea monsters are stronger than the average human. In the opening to Luca, Alberto in sea monster form is able to wrestle out of a net with two fishermen resisting him. 13-year-old Alberto is able to struggle free against two adult humans, demonstrating a sea monster strength. This strength applies to Luca as well, showing his combat potential. Unfortunately, Luca has some counter-arguments. Alberto is more experienced on the surface, meaning he would likely be stronger than Luca. Plus, it takes place in sea monster form and that strength might not transfer to human form. Also, Alberto was pinned down by Ericol's bullies, Sissio and Guido. Alberto loses and Luca chooses not to fight, not giving a good showing either. Luca, while agile and potentially strong, has no fighting skill. This average start worsens when compared to an experienced fighter like our next entry. Next is Merida. Merida is a trained and talented archer. She can fire an arrow accurate enough to split another arrow in half, rivaling Robin Hood. To supplement her precision, Merida has a fiery personality. She's brash and doesn't hold back. Like, you wouldn't want to fight Merida as an ordinary human because it would be a short encounter. She would let a few arrows fly and she'd ride into the sunset victorious. The following characters are stronger than human. This includes Pixar's mechanically and magically enhanced beings, as well as characters with more brute strength. Next is Mater from Cars 2. Mater has no combat strength, but being a car is more powerful than any human. Being made of metal, he can resist their attacks and run them over. Mater isn't the fastest in the Cars franchise, but would be able to provide some aggressive power. At some points in Cars 2, Mater is armed with Gatling guns. For the purpose of this list, they're being excluded as they're removed by the end of the film. What holds Mater back from a higher position is his attitude. The Queen! Over here! Mater is dithery and gullible. Smarter opponents can outwit him, as Sir Axelrod did. Mater is also a very morally grounded character who would likely resist a fight. He does this during the Lemon Party. Being metallic ranks Mater higher than a human, but there is still room for improvement. Following his best friend is Lightning McQueen. Lightning has all of Mater's strengths, with additional ones. Lightning is faster than Mater because he's a racer. This additional speed before colliding with an opponent would make a difference when fighting sturdier targets. Lightning is also not afraid to fight dirty. He uses other cars as jump ramps. While Mater's innocence holds him back, Lightning can be brutal. He's also more ambitious. Lightning was sold on his Peloton Cup victory and demanded Mac to drive all night to transport him to his next race. He doesn't hold back when passionate, meaning in a fight, he would fight fiercer than Mater. Next is Wally. Wally is an affectionate, lovable creature. He's by no means a character that springs to mind when thinking about combat worthy Pixar characters, but being a machine, Wally is resistant to death. He's extremely durable. He survives multiple crushings and being struck by lightning. Wally also replaces his treads, further evidence of his survivability. He's also intelligent. He can use tools such as the fire extinguisher to float around in space. Adapting to his environment would prove integral in combat, as would his complex problem-solving ability. Undoubtedly, Wally would be able to survive a conflict with any of the previous entries. Where Wally comes undone is his attitude. Wally's a pacifist, and he would not be willing to fight anyone. To back this up, he has no combat prowess and is small in size. Wally wouldn't suffer a catastrophic loss, but he wouldn't be winning either. Just making the top five is Sully from Monsters, Inc. Sully accomplishes a lot. He rips a door off its hinges and effortlessly throws Randall through a door. Sully is also agile, as shown in the hallway scene running from Mr. Waternoose. The combination of strength and agility makes for a dangerous setup. Sully also has an intimidating presence. He holds the top scare record and scares a group of adults, powering a door from the other side. He repeats this when banished in Monsters, Inc., demonstrating that this powerful aura has not been shed over the years. Sully's personality is gentle, and he's by no means a fighter, but in the right circumstance, Sully would definitely be among Pixar's most powerful characters. Next is Ian from Onward. The magic available to Ian is powerful. He can access spells for arcane lightning, levitation, and a disguise. All these have gargantuan impacts and open opportunities for multiple strategies. Ian can take a more offensive stance with arcane lightning or casting a growth spell on items around him. He can play more defensively, neutralizing the opponent with levitation. He can even use trickery, such as the disguise spell. Despite having access to powerful magic, Ian's fourth place finish is questionable. While the magic he possesses is powerful, Ian's ability to properly control such magic is varied. He struggles with a growth spell on the gas can. 
His excitement over the trust bridge spell puts him in jeopardy. This last step is for you! Ian's control over his magic is not certain enough to warrant a higher spot on the list. Next is Elastigirl. Elastigirl has been doing superhero work for years. She has already mastered her powers, unlike Ian who's still learning. Elastigirl has a distinctive fighting style that complements her powers. She is super flexible, like when she was breaking into Syndrome's compound. She was also agile on the rooftop, riding a motorcycle in a high-speed chase, flying a plane, and contorting herself into a variety of shapes are also among Elastigirl's talents. Elastigirl is also remarkable at maintaining her composure. She uses persuasion, and she's able to keep her emotions under wraps when working for the Devers. Through years of hero work, Elastigirl has developed many hero abilities, but she only gets third place because of the force behind first and second. Second place goes to Arlo from The Good Dinosaur. Arlo is an 18 feet tall Apatosaurus who weighs six tons. That sentence explains why he's ranked so high. Humans would probably die immediately if they tried to fight him. Arlo can overpower Elastigirl with ease. Plus, he has a long neck that can be used to attack her from a distance. Arlo's strengths are more impressive than his height and weight. Arlo survives crashing water, a flood that drowned his father. Resisting such an immense force is a serious feat. In the finale, he throws a log that snipes a pterosaur out of the sky. Arlo's miraculous ability to hit a difficult shot is a testament to his prowess in combat. A minor issue with Arlo is his timid nature. Arlo is afraid of challenges but learns to be bold as the film progresses. He stands up to the raptors, then finally the pterosaurs. Arlo's strength is unbelievable, especially considering he's the weakest Apatosaurus. Arlo's family is stronger and can carry more of the harvest than he can. His mother even tells him to work harder to keep up. Compared to his family, Arlo is as weak as the good dinosaur at the box office. However, Arlo's achievements are so substantial that he deserves this spot on the list. The most powerful Pixar protagonist is Mr. Incredible. During his training montage, he bench presses a freight train. That feat alone puts him at the top of this list. Mr. Incredible could undeniably take a hit from Arlo, a six-ton dinosaur. No other Pixar can do the same. I mean, come on, do you really think Dory could take that? To accompany his super strength, he has increased durability. He's an experienced fighter from years of superhero work. His mental game is also immaculate. He resists Syndrome's torture, showcasing his willpower. He's a talented strategist, hiding behind a skeleton to avoid Syndrome's facial scan. Mr. Incredible is also able to figure out that the only thing powerful enough to damage his Omnidroid is itself. However, an argument against Mr. Incredible is that his love for his family is a weakness. Syndrome exploits this when Mr. Incredible is captured. However, Mr. Incredible's family? Well, they're supers. Once the family is reunited, Mr. Incredible learns to not be so isolated, opting to let his family in. Also, other Pixar characters aren't powerful enough to pose a threat to Mr. Incredible's family, making this point ill-fitting. Another potential flaw of Mr. Incredible is his recklessness. When forbidden from acting as a super, he uses the police scanner to continue hero work. While this leads to trouble, Mr. Incredible's recklessness is also an enormous benefit to him. It allows him to be bold and charges into his enemies, making him an even better combatant. Over his years of superhero work, Mr. Incredible has perfected his physical and mental game, making him the most powerful Pixar protagonist. All right, guys, that is it. Let us know in the comments section who you think is the most powerful character, and let us know what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our week to powerful playlist, where we break down who the most powerful characters are in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.